when it's Tuesday evening and it's time for weather for weather geeks only a few more days left in the month of March it's been a busy month we haven't had of course much wintry weather this March but we've had plenty of wind and rain and all sorts of uh, busy weather at times over the last uh, couple of weeks including of course just a few days ago on Saturday and actually the National Weather Service office in Cleveland did a storm survey up in Crawford County in uh, northern Pennsylvania this was near the Crawford Erie County line in Northwest PA, and they determined that there was actually a microburst uh, that occurred around 3:24 p.m. on Saturday in northern parts of the county around Venango Township. Uh, estimated wind speeds 90 to 100 miles per hour, uh, with uh, thankfully no injuries or anything like that. But this was an exception. Most of the uh, problems with wind on Saturday straight line winds. A microburst is more a plume of wind coming out of the clouds, hitting the ground, and then. Sp- splatting and, and the wind goes out in all directions um, it's kind of a different animal than just straight line winds which typically of course just go in a straight line in one direction so this was an exception uh, they determined that a microburst did occur up in northern Crawford County I went through the record books to uh, compare our 61 mile per hour gust uh, registered at the airport a little before 3 p.m. on Saturday to the all-time records at the uh, YNG airport this was I believe the fourth highest gust in the month of March, but this is the uh, list of of, uh, highest gusts for any date. 78 miles per hour back on March 27th, 1976. You'll notice a lot of these dates are in the springtime, March and April, with a couple of summer dates, no doubt, with severe thunderstorms. Not too many in the fall and early winter. There's one in October, there's one in November, there's one in December, but otherwise we're talking midsummer or springtime for a lot of these really strong wind gusts officially at the airport. All right, thanks to a warm month of February, spring got off to a fast start, of course, in many spots. Everywhere where you see red, the leaf out occurred ahead of schedule. And this was especially pronounced north of, uh, say, uh, the Tennessee Valley, north of the Carolinas. So in places like Cincinnati and Dayton and Charleston and Louisville, um, spring or, you know, the kind of leaf out, things greening up, occurred as much as three weeks or so ahead of average. Now, Spring's northward progress did slow down over the last few weeks thanks to some cooler weather, at least compared to the average, than we had back in February. But things are starting to green up across our viewing area. Some trees are starting to show some buds, some bushes, certainly some things in the ground, uh, tulips and uh, lilacs and things like that are beginning to uh, show signs of of life. And uh, that process will continue, of course, as we go forward, but it's still way too early to talk about being done with any sort of true wintry type weather the uh, average date, the 30-year average date of the last 32, the last freeze of the season. And it isn't until uh, May the 5th. Last year, we had our last freeze on April 29th. You can see sometimes it's all the way deep into May before we have our last freeze of the season. As far as measurable snowfall goes, of course, we haven't had much in recent uh, weeks. But the uh, 30-year average final date of the last, you know, the, the, the measurable snowfall, more than a trace, um, April 11th. Last year was uh, April 19th, but uh, 2020 and 2021, we had snow, measurable snow, on May the 9th for two years in a row. That's pretty remarkable. And back in 2016, we had uh, measurable snow on May the 15th. But again, the average is the first, uh, sometime in the first couple of weeks of April. We're not quite done with March just yet, but March will be much closer to the average temperature wise than both January and February. February was one of the warmest on record. March will be closer to average, um, and it'll end up being warmer than February was as far as the the, the actual temperatures. Um, but compared to the average, uh, it will be much closer to average than February. But it, it's been neck and neck as far as the actual temperatures go in, in March compared to February. Uh, March is going to end up being a little bit warmer than February, but only by a little bit, not by much. All right, some clouds pushing in this evening, but these clouds will uh, dissipate as we go through the... Uh, Overnight. Uh, by the way, a word on the five planet thing. If you've been seeing, uh, you know, some some posts on a lot of sources online about five planets being visible in the sky. First of all, we have too many clouds this evening. Uh, at the time in which theoretically this would be possible, because two of those planets set not long after the sun. That would be Jupiter and uh, Mercury. The third planet that is technically up there is Uranus, which can only be seen with a telescope or binoculars. It cannot be seen with the naked eye. So really, you just have a chance of seeing two planets, um, Mars and Jupiter. 
um, if conditions are right on clear evenings this week. We'll have uh, some clear skies Thursday evening, maybe check out a couple of those planets along with the moon, but uh, there's no way we're going to see five planets lined up in our sky uh, across our area. It's also not that rare. It happens once a year, basically, where, where five planets like that are aligned in the western sky not long after sunset. All right, in the meantime, out in the west, check this thing out. I mean, just storm after storm after storm battering California over the last several months, and they're just getting inundated once again with heavy rain and mountain snow in California, parts of uh, the Pacific Northwest and the Intermountain West as well. Back here at home, we'll start the day with sunshine Wednesday. We'll finish the day on a different note, though. This is a fast-moving and pretty potent cold front. Uh, it'll kick up the wind. Nothing like 61 miles per hour like we had on Saturday, but maybe a 40 mile per hour gust towards dinner time on Wednesday. Uh, a band of rain with some wet snow mixed in. Um, snow's not going to stick really, but everything will be wet for our evening commute. But that's a quick hitter. We're back to sunshine for Thursday. This will be a cold, frosty start to the day, but an abundance of sunshine for our Thursday with temperatures below average for the afternoon, but still not bad with that strong late March sunshine. All right, let's talk about the end of the week and the upcoming weekend. Here's an area of low pressure. Uh, this is the same thing that's plowing into California right now. It comes across, and by Friday morning, it's centered over Des Moines, Iowa, with a warm front lifting to the north. It'll be the mild weather on Friday. We'll get well up into the 50s, but there'll be some showers from time to time, and then this low is going to deepen and intensify and, unfortunately, bring us another chance for some gusty winds as we kick off the weekend. It'll be breezy on Friday, but nothing crazy. It's Saturday, just like this past weekend, that we are more concerned about some uh, strong wind gusts. Now, this is going to be a different flavor to the Saturday we just had. There's going to be no thunderstorms, it seems like, on Saturday. It's also going to be much colder Saturday afternoon than it was this past Saturday. It's actually pretty warm outside with the winds this past Saturday. This Saturday, this coming Saturday, we could have wind gusts like this with temperatures falling through the 50s into the 40s during the afternoon. Um, a lot of questions online today. Will this be just like what we had on Saturday? Uh, the answer to that is... Sort of, kind of, but not really. Um, I doubt we see a 60 mile per hour gust locally. Maybe a higher chance for that over towards I-71. Uh, Mansfield to Cleveland area, maybe down towards uh, Columbus. But for us, I think 50 to 55 is about what we're looking at. Now, this will come with some rain showers, and this, the ground is already kind of saturated and loose. And so if you've got trees that aren't in the greatest of shape and maybe are ready to take a tumble if they haven't already, maybe a concern. Power outages and down trees, that sort of thing on Saturday. So there are some similarities in some respects to what we just dealt with on Saturday, but it's going to be a different flavor to the day overall. But bottom line is wind is wind, and this is not something we want to see on the weather maps on a Saturday once again. Now, this will be followed by a brief cool down on Sunday, but just like this past week, on Sunday will be a much better day than Saturday. But check out next week. We're going to be well above the average for a handful of days next week. There's been big trends, uh, big changes on the modeling over the last handful of days suggesting that we're going to spend a few days well up into the 60s next week maybe even 70 or so will be attainable by tuesday and wednesday of next week i don't think this is likely to continue throughout april i do think that by the second week of april we're back in the uh in the, the a cooler temperature regime but uh, the trend has been our friend for that first week of april i think we'll string together a handful of, of pretty mild days compared to the average. Thank you for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Tuesday evening. Let's do it again on Wednesday. Same time, same place. Easy for me to say.